Hey guys, welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a fear and greed index in R. The index is an overall gauge for the market and it uses seven factors. And in the script, I tried replicating those seven factors. For the first factor, they use market momentum, which is just using the S&P 500 and the 125 day moving average. The second factor is the stock price strength, which is just taking a look at the 52 week high and the 52 week lows on the NYSE. The third is the stock price breadth which takes a look at the volumes of rising and declining stocks. They also use the put and call ratios, smoothed out by a five day moving average. Another factor they use is the market volatility, which compares the VIX to the 50 day moving average. Another factor used is the safe haven demand, which takes a look at the 20 day stock returns versus the bond returns. And lastly, they also take a look at junk bond demand, which is just the yield spread between the junk bonds and investment grade bonds. So by taking a look at all of these factors, they come up with a gauge and we see that the previous reading was 57 the reading today is 64 but when I ran it for the previous day I got a rating of 56 so by using the code in the script you'll be able to replicate this chart and you can possibly use your own factors if you want to change things around for the reading yesterday we got a total of 56 out of 100 and the Delta change between the previous day was a decline of six points let's go ahead and go over the script here are some of the packages we're going to require. We're going to start by getting the data for the S&P 500. We're going to clean the data to make sure we only get business days. And we're going to add the 150 day moving average. We're going to take the percentage difference between the close and the moving average, remove any NAs, and we're going to go ahead and rank that percentage difference. So it'll create a new column. And if we take a look at market momentum, we see that we have added the rank. And if we go ahead and sort this, we see that the spread or the difference between the close and the moving average was negative 38%. So it gave it the lowest ranking. And if we sort this from highest to lowest, the highest ranking was a percentage difference of 22% between the close and the moving average. So by using this ranking system, we're always going to get a scale of zero to 100, which will be used in the market gauge. So again, depending on the methodology you want to use, you should use a similar ranking system System that rates the values of what you're comparing from 0 to 100 but I'll go ahead and leave that up to you now in the second block for stock price strength I'm gonna read in my files from Finviz that we were able to scrape and we're gonna generate an XCS object that compares the count for all the stocks hitting 52 week highs over the ones that are hitting 52 week lows since each of the files represent a unique trading day I'm just gonna row bind the results clean the data in case we have to divide by zero and then add a rank if we take a look at that XTS object. So we have our ratio on a daily basis and then our rank. Similarly, in the next section, which is stock price breadth, I'm going to use the same files and I'm just going to aggregate the volume for the stocks that had a positive change or those that closed up and also for the stocks that closed down on that particular day. And we'll be doing the same thing by creating a ratio of up volume over down volume and adding a rank as well. So if we take a look at breadth, we have a ratio on a daily basis along with the rank that we have added in the last line. And I believe those are it for the Finviz files. For the put and call ratio, I do have this ratio calculated on a daily basis. So again, I'll be reading in my files, creating a ratio and returning that as an XDS object. I'm going to add a five day moving average and then rank. So if we take a look at put and call. So we have our ratio on a daily basis, the five day moving average and then our rank. And for the next block, which is the market volatility. I'm just going to be reading in the VIX, adding a moving average, finding the difference between the close and the moving average, and I'm going to be using the spread to rank. So that one's pretty straightforward since we're just gathering data from Yahoo Finance. And number six and seven are pretty similar. What I did was grab the S&P 500, calculated the returns on the close. I grabbed a one year bond, formatted it to get the daily rate. I merged the S&P 500 returns with the bond returns, subtracted to get the risk premium, and then I added a 20 day moving average on that spread, which we will be using to rank. So we take a look at net. So we have our risk premium on a daily basis. We have our moving average and then the rank. And for number seven, I'm just going to grab the high yield, converting that into a daily rate. Next, I'll grab the investment grade yield, convert that into a daily rate, merge both of these together, get the net yield, and then pass that in to get the rank. So this will be similar to number six. Once we have one through seven computed, we can then rank all. For this chunk, I'm just going to grab the last observation, save these into these variables, calculate the mean for one through seven, and then we can print out the results. So you see what they are individually. So we get one through seven 
seven, and then the overall rank as well. And then this number gets passed into our gauge. And in order to get the previous reading, I'm just gonna grab the last two observations and then just return the oldest. So essentially the same thing as the block above, but this is for the previous day. And then we also print out the results. So we see that the previous was around 62%. And now once we have that computed, we can go ahead and create the market gauge. So again, this is by using Plotly. So here we have our configuration and then we list the steps and then the different colors. And you might have to play around with these X and Y values for the labels, depending on your figure size, in case you wanna move them around. And after you completed this block, it will go ahead and print out the fear and greed index. Well, this concludes the video guys. I hope this was useful information. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.